to a sort of more casual review because I picked up a bunch of old figures for a discount price of 99 Hong Kong dollars each. All five of these are from DC Direct or DC Collectibles, whatever name they want to call themselves these days. And they're all from the DC CW TV show universe or whatever. On the left hand side we have Hawk Girl from the season one of Legends of Tomorrow. We have Malcolm Merlin or the Dark Archer, Green Arrow himself from season three. Heatwave from The Flash before he joined Legends of Tomorrow and our second Firestorm Legends of Tomorrow. So uh, you see how I kind of already ripped this box. Oopsies. That wasn't like, like that in the shop. That's my fault. So I'm just going to open one of these because I'm not too big a fan of these boxes. Actually, I'm going to open this one because I already uh, chopped, like, opened up it completely. Remove all the cellar tape. So uh, because they want to do this DC Collectibles weird shape thing that they have right there, they have to do all these weird flaps and stuff. So on the top end there, you've got the cellar tape on, on, the, on the end there. You still have both sides, so that's annoying. So you open that and you pull the figure out. You have another plastic tray here, but here's an interesting thing. There are holes on the plastic here, I guess, to air out the figures. So doesn't get like, moldy inside, maybe. If you open the bottom of it, you can see um, three tapes on the bottom. And on the side, it also has two more extra tapes because you can actually e open this up even more. Um, at this point, I'm questioning what's up with the manufacturing of these boxes. Why they have to be so awkward and stuff. Eh, but whatever, on the side of the boxes, on all of them, you have a picture of the, of the figure itself. And on the back here, it shows you some of the other figures released in the same similar time. So um, if I do see like these other figures for similar cheapy price, I definitely pick them up. Inside here, you have the figure itself in a plastic tray that's in another cardboard tray. So that's even more like material. And then we've got like more cellar tape there. That's just a lot of material. This is not environmentally friendly. And inside almost all of these, um, all these figures, there's a cellar tape holding the hands in place because otherwise they'd fall out, but they manufactured it good enough that the gun doesn't fall out. So I don't know why they couldn't do that with the rest of the plastic tray. And the figures themselves, they all have like twisty ties. In this case, he has twisty ties on both his feet as well as the torso. And um, I do keep twisty ties because they're actually useful. You can see even without the twisty ties, he's stuck in there. So yeah, I really hate this much packaging. Okay, it seems most of these figures seem to be the same height despite, you know, different actor heights and whatever. So uh, let's start with Green Arrow here. This figure for season three is 17 and a half centimeters or just seven inches. So, um, yep, he's the same seven inches. So he's a little bit under seven inches because I have the hood. He's a little bit shorter under seven inches and she is uh, also just a little bit under seven inches so all of them have pretty much uh, same heights and whatever the final problem i've done these figures is their shoulders kind of look a bit weird like they you know stuck out a little bit especially on him and um, on these two figures in particular the actual body seems a little bit on the flim side or the legs seem a little bit long just the overall proportions just seem a little bit off uh, Mickey is fine and uh, Hawk Girl there is also okay for the most part and due to his robes he also looks pretty decent but when you look at these sort of more skinny figures the, the sh body shape just looks a little bit off the uh, the arms and head look to be the right size it's just that middle section there just looks I don't know it doesn't look right when they attach to the figure is the bow holding hand as well as this hand for holding one of the arrows and he also has those hands in reverse order as well as a pair of fists and here's his bow it looks pretty decent quite detailed and uh, it's got a rubber band string there that uh, does a good job of pulling it back these bits are not made out of soft or rubbery plastic so you gotta be careful with this this can break so easily so be careful with that he also comes with different arrows we've got um, three of them and all of them have the same tips on the end with green and yellow painting but on the other side we have a standard silver arrow we have i think this is the explosive arrow and this one is I don't know what I can't remember what this one is. This is uh, it's got a bump there. Is it for notes or USB or whatever one of the electronic ones? I can't remember. So uh, by the way, these are cool to have, you know, different arrows and stuff. And all of them can be slotted into his quiver pack. Uh, you can slot at least one of them into his quiver pack. Let me try and slot a second one in there. Uh, yeah, that's not going. So you can put one in the back. Just like infinite uh, inf Crisis, just like Crisis Infinite Earth, he has one left. Oh no! So, another thing that I'll say for all of these figures is I don't think any of them, they either didn't have anyone who knows how to sculpt heads, not the 
the printing technology or they just didn't have the license or didn't pay for the license for the actor's likeness because all of them are sort of like if the CWDC TV shows had a PS2 game and they made figures out of those, these are kind of what that looked like. You see here, yeah, it's sort of got the shape of Stephen ML and you know, you get the hood down, it kind of looks like him. But as soon as you look for him, it's straightforward. It's like, um, nope. And the eyes are also kind of wide, like, who? Who? <laughs> Surprise face, so whatever. <laughs> but aside from the face, uh, the actual painted work on this figure is pretty nice. It's got a nice weathering and cloth effects going on throughout the entire figure. Uh, the overall paint job is pretty good. It also painted nice little details on the side there and the boots also painted quite nicely. So overall it is a decent looking figure and for, for the most part on the shelf it should look fine. It's only when you look up to it you go, hey the proportions are a bit weird, hey the face isn't quite right. Mm -hmm -hmm. Now for the most part this figure uses a hard plastic which I'm okay, it, it doesn't feel cheap or anything and uh, you know, it feels quite solid. But there's a few places where they do use soft plastic. For example, this hood piece, this is soft rubbery plastic. It has to get out the way of the head. And the head is actually painted all the way around. I found that out by pulling this back. And of course, this hood is actually glued down, which I ripped one of the glue bits off. Whoops, I can always super glue that back on, but nah, I'm not bothered. And uh, yeah, it would have been nice if this hood was, I guess you could just unglue it yourself and just rip it off and it would move along with the head. So that that's something you could do, I guess. Hmm. In terms of articulation, he has a ball joint for the head, which is uh, somewhat limited because the hood gets in the way, but you can still look up and look down a fair bit. Arms, um, single like joint there, hinge joint and then rotating there, single elbow joint with another rotating joint, and hands are on a little peg and swivel. Torso wise, he does have double joints, but uh, yeah, that's sort of moving. You see the details do extend up there, so that's kind of good. This is very stiff. It only rotates. I can't get it to go bend like forwards and backwards. Same for the lower joint there as well, so I'm not really sure why it's so stiff. They really could have just put a ball joint in there and it would have just... I mean, if they're cutting the plastic up and making joints anyway, why not stick a ball joint? Like, just... yeah. So he can't bend his torso backwards and forwards, not really. Leg-wise, they do go up only that much and that's just pathetic for a martial artist such as the Green Arrow from the TV show. Uh, he can spread his legs out a lot more. Mm. His right foot can spread out more than his left. Yeah, that's as much as it wants to go. So uh, this one, this foot is just really, really stiff and I'm not happy with that. So, so uh, yeah, and because of the way these joints are, they're not going to do any extra rotating anywhere around here. So these figures are mostly just going to stand in a few basic poses and that's it. Double knee joint. Uh, let's see. Only a single peg and swivel there. So he can't even rotate his feet. He is very limited and it is very hard to get him into a you have filled this city arrow shooting pose. You see, that's as much action posing you can get out of it. Well, and here he comes with his bow, which again looks quite good. It's not as painted as detailed as the green arrow one, but it still has a sort of rubber banished string there. So that's quite nice. And he also comes with a single arrow that is painted differently to the green arrow's stuff, whatever. As for the figure itself, whoa, that's that's just not like him at all. That's again, it's got the sort of basic head shape, but um, yeah, that's not him. I do wonder if you put this under a UV printer and print his face onto it, would that like actually make this look pretty good? Because the hairstyle is right, the head shape I think is close enough. So if you just get like a face printing technology and just print his the actor's face on, would that fix this head? Because right now, it. Um, yeah, it's not like him at all. <laughs> so, uh, and I like Green Owl, he's, he's got a bunch of owls there that cannot be pulled out and the screw packs also stuck in there quite permanently. Softish plastic there though, so that's good. Aside from the face, so the hair paint is okay and the actual suit and uniform looks just filthy <laughs> in a good way. Like the weathering effect here, just got that leathery look. And uh, you know, these pieces are softish so they do get out of the way of articulation if you need it to. That's cool. My biggest complaint, apart from the face, is that these elbow shoulder bits do just looks weird. So our head is on a ball joint, of course. So, uh, but you can't really look up or down, only a little bit. So, that kind of sucks. Uh, yep, shoulders only go up that far. And full rotation, I think it's due to the shape of his clothing. And then, wait, where's the joint? There's the joint. He's got a single elbow joint, but it can go up that far and... Um, Peg and swivel for the hands. It's got a little bit of like soft 
leathery bits that come out, like rubber bits, that, um, yeah, they don't get in the way of articulation or this of there, so it's nice touch of detail, I guess. Torso, he can, um, well, there's a joint, it feels like there's a joint there. Oh, yeah, it's hidden inside, so that's cool. He's got full taking joint there, but uh, not really backwards and forth. That's mostly the actual legs that are doing it. And so his legs can open up. They're just like Green Arrow's legs, so don't expect any rider kick poses, because these figures are just cannot do it. And we do have double knee joint there. And foot is on a peg. And uh, is there swiveling here? I can't get it to try the other foot. Well, that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, more limited articulation. And of course, with that rope getting in the way, he's going to do even less <laughs> martial arty poses. So much for, ooh, I'm going to be the heir of Ra's al Ghul. Uh, or Ra's al Ghul. Hmm. Next up with Mick Rory here, or um, Heat Wave. Uh, so he's got his gun holding hands, it's very open hands, and he's got a reverse pair for those hands. Also got a uh, pair of fists, so that's good. And of course he has his heat wave gun. Which uh, the gun itself is pretty quite nice, it looks quite good. Got electric bits on the end, and uh, these tubes are soft-ish plastic, so that's kind of cool. Painted quite nicely, pretty good. For the figure himself, of course he doesn't have his ungoggled head. So what we have here is... Um, this head's too too long. Like it looks okay from the front, but on the side it just looks kind of weird. Like um, either his head is squished, or it's too long. But from the front it looks okay, um, okay-ish. Does it look like him? Um, yeah, I guess if you have beard goggles, it looks like him. So aside from the head again, not quite looking like him. The body itself, you can see there's no cuts anywhere, so this is going to be again very limited in articulation. But uh, the legs and paint job is all pretty good. There's a little hook there for his gun. Let's see how well that does. How am I supposed to hook that? I think I'd do that. Like so. That sort of, sort of works. No, it's not working. Hmm. Um, I'll look more into that in a moment, but whatever. So yeah, again, it's painted quite nicely. Not sure if that's a paint mess up or not, because that logo there looks off. And no, no, whatever. So uh, that head is on a board joint again, but you can't really look down. It look a little bit down and up. It's just almost non-existent. Shoulder, uh, swivel. That much for his elbow. There's a swivel joint there as well, and peg and swivel for the hands. Torso, oh, that can rotate quite nicely. Like goes up, it goes sideways. You can do pretty good splits, more than Malcolm Merlin. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, there we go. Double knee joints and foot goes. I think that's rotating joint there and a little bit yep is it actually a ball peg no it's just a peg and swivel again so yeah he's just got that so he's he can post more dynamically than malcolm merlin that's that's hilarious next up is firestorm aside from the fist already attached to him he also has a pair of these flamey hands which look kind of cool those those are nice and a pair of i guess grippy or item holding hands he also has one extra right hand where he's doing a fire blast. He also comes with a second head where the flame is on, his eyes are white. So that's kind of cool as well. I do like that. That's a nice accessory. So he's got really good accessories for, you know, compared to the other ones in this line. But once again, the head here is just not quite, um, again, from some angles, like this angle, that looks kind of like him. That kind of looks like him, but from straight on, it's not him. But it's not a bad head, it's just not the actor's face. For the body paint itself, it looks quite good, quite decent. Um, all the colouring, uh, shading, with the whole like, levery look that they do on the show is all captured quite here. That <laughs> elbow pad is just painted on. That's... wow. That's... Um, I didn't even bother moulding that. Wow. It's, it feels like they, they forgot about it. Like, oh crap, there's something meant to be there. Let's just draw it on. So, um, yeah, but the rest of the suit, some of the details are quite nice, nicely done. So, okay, fair enough. But what I really don't like is, uh, you know, for all this weathering effect looks nice, they didn't bother weathering the inside here. And you can see that the bright yellow just sort of shines through when you're rotating the figure, and it just looks really off. So, um, yeah. And here, this joint here, you see you can move backwards and forth chest a little bit. Ever so slightly, so rotating joint there. So, uh, goes to, like, feel like that. You should be able to do that with the green owl figure as well, but you can't. You just, you just can't. So, uh, 
yeah, let me just <laughs> stick that back on, come on. It's uh, not the easiest thing to do. So anyway, so it's got full rotating joint on the head. Oh, seriously, for, for, for God's sake. There we go, just had to do it on camera. So uh, full rotating joint there, you can look ever, not really up, but you can, but you can look down and look forward. So that that's that. Uh, so uh, rotating joint there um, and rotating joint there, like I said, mentioned earlier. Seems to have a little bit of more of a space there for his legs to go up and down, so that's cool. You can actually do that. Like, why can't all the figures do that? Seriously. And also move his legs out just a little bit. So, he's the best articulated figure out of the lot so far. Um, same shoulder shoulder joints, same rotating joints there. That's quite loose. Hand on peg and swivel. And a double knee joint. And then foot goes forwards and back and rocks left and right but no rotating joint there so but still in terms of all the figures and articulation he's the best so far here hawk girl i was actually the most excited to pick her because uh i'm you know i've seen pictures online this is probably like one of the best looking like cw tv show figures ever but um, after i opened it up i was hugely disappointed so aside from the two relaxed hands already on her she also has a pair of mace holding hands and a pair of fists and of course the hawk go mace which you know looks okay it's quite nice and of course she also has a pair of rings which attach on little ball pegs on the back of her body but i'll do that at the end so uh yeah look wise this looks great you know with the mask and stuff and the actual face actually kind of looks like her her skin's a little bit on the light side because i remember she's a darker skin person so this is a bit too fleshy, if that makes sense. A little bit more brown would look more like her. A little bit more tan would look a bit more like her. But uh, I guess because they have the mask over the head for the most part, they can get it closer to a likeness without, you know, likeness rights and all that. So yeah, the actual jawline and the eyes look kind of like her. So, you know, in facialness, this is probably the best one out of the lot. A little bit of hair on the back there. And uh, yeah, those are two pegs where the um, wings plug in, which is going to be quite ugly if you don't want wings on her all the time. Oh well, it's on the back. And the rest of the suit is painted and sculpted very nicely. There's little leather details all over the place. It, it you know, it looks good, but um, well, let's go on the wings. The wings are just singly molded. I think there's a bit of a wash on them. Yeah, a little bit of black lines, but otherwise it's, it's okay. And you know, they just have these little basic hinge joints. That's, that's absolutely fine. I have no problems with that whatsoever. So plug these into her. The ball joints I think are quite secure, quite tight. Yeah, they're not gonna fall down. And then you can do some pretty cool or badass poses. Like, you know, if you put her on like a, like a figure stand or something and when she's flying and doing, do one of her mace stuff, she can do quite well for the most part until you get to the actual articulation problem. That's my biggest gripe. So her head is just a ball joint and that moves very well because of how skinny her neck is, I suppose. Uh, shoulders go up and down, your full rotation there, and these bits don't get in the way. So that's, again, that's good. That's something that they might've learned from like, you know, Japanese figures and all that. Single elbow joint and uh, I guess because of how skinny she is, they didn't want to break a ugly hinge joint there. So ah, that's fine. And hands on the peg and swivel. Torso, zero articulation. You're telling me Hawk girl and they also have this like plasticky, soft plasticky belt that can hide a joint. Zero. From neck down to here, it is a single solid piece and it's also made out of very hard plastic. So if you want to cut this and add a joint yourself, it's going to be a pain. You're going to need an actual like buzz saw or an actual proper saw. There's no way I'm going to cut through this without completely destroying the figure, uh, the figure or my fingers. So if I can find a workshop or something or someone with a buzz saw, I could cut through it. But otherwise, I'm not going to try bothering. Uh, I don't know, something to think of. Maybe sometime in the future if I want to customize this or something. But yeah, no, no body joints whatsoever. That's just disgustingly bad. Leg goes up again, not too far. Can't go back because of her butt shape. And legs go out just a little bit. And again, this this leg doesn't go up as much as the other one. Just like uh, Firestorm. Double knee joints and... Oh look, they gave a rotating joint there. How nice of them. Ugh, for God's sake. 
A few notes after trying different poses and stuff with these figures that I noticed uh, for Firestorm, swapping his hands were great and for Hoko as well, those were pretty good. With Heatwave however, because they add a lot of paint to the hands themselves, swapping hands were a huge pain because there was too much paint on the pegs they used to swap which can lead to your know, breaking or snapping so before you swap your hands around be sure to try and strip some of the paint off from the little pegs and that way you can avoid you know breaking them and stuff and I did also try different ways to like plug the gun onto that little holster on the side I couldn't find any way to um, make it like actually work so I'm not sure what's going on there Another thing to notice uh, with Green Arrow, his hands were made out of softer material so I could easily plug the arrow into his finger so I can pull it back as you see on the screen right now as well as just okay-ish to plug into the bow although you have to be really careful with that because it's very thin plastic and uh, there will be a tendency to snapping it so be very careful extra careful with that but it is doable. With Malcolm Merlin however his hand is made out of a hard plastic and it just wouldn't, it wouldn't give um, I didn't want to snap his arrow so I just gave up. So overall I think these figures aside from the faces they are overall sculpted and painted quite nicely but as with a lot of these figures from DC Collectibles or DC Direct I think they focused way too much on the actual looks of the figures like they think oh this looks great and they forgot to make actual action figures. There are too many areas where they sacrifice the joints just to make the suit look more consistent I guess and yet there are also weird places such as the joint between Firestorm's stomach where they didn't achieve uh, their goals. So what's going on here and there's also there isn't a consistency between these figures. Some figures have better posability, some, some figures have extra joints, some figures don't. Some figures seem to have the same joint, but they don't. They don't move the same way. This, without any instructions or actual, like, closer look or guide to what articulation these figures actually have, this can lead to breakage. If you pick up a Firestorm and you think, okay, he has a joint in his foot right here, and then you pick up the arrow figure, and then you're trying to move the same joint, it doesn't work the same way. You might think, oh, maybe that's just a paint dry, they need to put it in hot water, I, I don't know. If you try to, you know, force it too much, you might break the plastic because they also use soft-ish plastic in joints, which is just, ah. Uh. So, yeah, there's a reason why their figures just aren't that popular compared to, say, I don't know, something from Hasbro or Marvel Legends or something, is because there's just something off a balance, something that they just don't quite get right. And that's the same here. For the price that I pay for, a discounted price, uh, you know, these figures do look cool together, posed together, like, oh, cool, this is my first ever bunch of DC CW TV show figures standing nice to each other with, you know, sort of actor ish faces, sort of realistic looks, and in dynamic poses. I don't really notice their weird body proportions as much. And, um, but yeah, but if I were to pay full price for these, the original price for these, I would have definitely been quite upset. So definitely only consider picking these up as a discount or second hand or whatever. But if you see these at full price, maybe give them a skip unless they're like your favorite character or whatever. I have seen online pictures like Martian Manhunter, he looks great. Santa releases him, also comes with a little like a Star Wars thing that can plug to his chest. That's the one to pick up. Uh, Black Canary looks great too from what I've seen online. And um, yeah, maybe I'll try and pick some of the other DC uh, T TV stuff if I see them for a good or cheaper price. But um, yeah, just stay away from retail original prices. They're just not that good. If you enjoyed this video, found the information useful, please consider clicking the thumbs up button. If you don't like this video or hate the figures, click the thumbs down button, that's fine. And please do feel free to leave a comment below how you think about these figures or any of the other DC TV figures that DC Collectibles or DC Direct has released. And from what I can see, the McFarlane Green Arrow, while that has problems as well, at least the posability is a lot better of that figure and I might consider picking that up as well. And since that's more a seven inch figure, it should fit in with these as well. Please be sure to share this video with other people that find this useful as well. And you'll support this channel on Patreon when you do that or just watch videos with Adblock turned off. I would appreciate that a lot. As always, take care, have a nice day and try not to fail your city. Mm, that's, uh, that sounded better in my head. Oops.